All right, um, so we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Diane Lechner. I'm the VP of Sales uh, for Midland Scientific, um, and we are happy to be co-hosting uh, this webinar with uh, Buki today. Um, thanks to everyone for joining. Um, for, for the folks uh, that are on the call here, um, please make sure that uh, you're muted um, for right now. We will um, actively be monitoring the chat during this. So if you have any questions, feel free to put those in there, uh, but we will, we will leave plenty of time at the end um, for any follow-up questions that, that folks may have. Um, so I'll do a quick intro here and then hand it off. Um, so uh, Buki is a Midland partner offering over 80 years of experience in laboratory technology for R&D, quality control, and production. They provide solutions to food and beverage, feed, chemical, environmental, and pharmaceutical industries with the focus on improving efficiency, safety, and meeting corporate initiatives for greener chemistry. So I'm gonna hand it off to the moder moderator for today's webinar, uh, Ryan Palermo, and then we've got some other folks listed here that will also be joining us. So welcome to Buki, and I will leave it with you guys, thanks. Thanks, Diane. Yep, so uh, my name is Ryan Palermo, and I'm a market manager at Buki, and with me I have Jerry Richardson, who is a Keldall applications expert, and Ryan Votro, an NIR applications expert. Over the next 15 to 20 minutes, we'll talk about protein analysis for your goals and business life cycle. Uh, this, is, this will be a discussion on the where, when, how to find your best fit protein determination method. So Jerry, why don't you kick us off and let the audience know why we are doing this webinar. Okay, so just real quickly, why we're doing this webinar is, um, after almost 20 years in the laboratory and 13 years working as a vendor, I've noticed some kind of inconsistencies between what, what between vendors and users of instrumentation. So, and also I've been involved with a lot of webinars, some good and some not so good. What we want to do today is, is a bit unique from what I've seen about most webinars. We want to bring a practical insight to you from things that we've garnered, things that we've gained from working with customers at different points in their business life cycle. Our goal is to present ourselves as guides through today. So that way you and others, we can address your challenges like the ones we, that you've been brought to and so on and so forth and make that connection between the vendor and, uh, <coughs> and then you as users, all right? So, so yep. So food and feed quality control teams monitor a lot of different quality parameters. So why did we single out protein for today's discussion? Okay, sorry, I missed my cue. Um, simply put, protein is, is a revenue stream for people. If you think about it logically, one of the things that we look at is we look at and wanna work with people with uh, healthy financials. And so, um, when it comes right down to it, protein is one of those factors for healthy financials. Um, use too much, use too little, whatever the case may be. So what we want to do is help you narrow down the choices based on where your company is right now, while positioning, positioning a smooth transition to where you want to be in the future. Um, return on investment or ROI is an important metric that we all have to continually look at, and we're going to keep pointing back to that throughout the course of this webinar. At Buki, we want to help our customers get their products to market as quickly as possible while maintaining compliance and quality. However, we recognize that businesses are unique. They have different goals, expectations, different lab spaces, personnel, and budgets. And a, a great protein solution for one business could easily be a misstep for another. So what we wanna do is help the business get matched to the right solution for your business today while setting you up for the future of success. Thanks, Jerry. So at Buki, we offer three different product lines that facilitate protein measurements. We have Keldall, Benchtop, Near-Infrared Spectroscopy, or NIR, and Inline or Online NIR Process Analyzers. Let's just take uh, the next few minutes to discuss these technologies with a high-level overview. So Jerry, can you start us off with Keldall, please? Sure. Okay, so the, the main thing to really remember about what we're talking about in the world of protein is what is the standard by which we all measure um, protein globally? 
And Keldahl is that gold standard, if you will, <coughs> and a reference method for everybody. It's compliant across the world, if you will. A protein number determined here is a protein number determined there. If it's done by Keldahl, we know it's gonna be compliant according to the, the rules of the FDA and others. Um, the beauty of what Keldahl is, is it's, it was built originally in the 1800s. And even though um, we're still using that same three steps we used then, we have better tools today and we have flexible throughput. So we have tools all the way from something that's still very manual, like what was done in the 1800s, and then tools all the way to what is fully automated, one button push start and so on and so forth. And then of course, when it comes to throughput, we can help you with uh, if you're just working with quality control or if you're actually using it routinely day in, day out. So that's actually a really nice situation with Keldahl. And uh, going on to uh, the Benchtop NIR, if there is a drawback to Keldahl, it's probably speed. And that's where Benchtop NIR comes into play. With a Benchtop NIR, we gain a lot of uh, uh, time, if you will, simply because Keldahl process typically requires a digestion followed by titration and distillation, which typically takes a couple of hours. On the other hand, when you're talking about a benchtop NIR, it's really a nice introduction to, uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, into the NIR world because it's very easy to use. Um, and on top of that, with NIR, there are multiple parameters that can be measured. So what we have now is we have a tool that can help you with the primary methods, and then we have the tool that can help you with uh, um, helping you pick up the speed for your quality controls and decision making. So those of you who's, who've worked with uh, NIR in the past, there are multiple parameters that we can measure simultaneously. There are many existing calibrations out there, but what, what is your set apart from your competition is always a question people should ask themselves. And do you have a primary, a proprietary blend? In working on R&D and transitioning the process, or maybe even plant-based materials or whatever else and so on. So this may seem a little salesy, but you can still use NIR technology. NIR's Abuki's Proximate incorporates a function called AutoCal. If you don't have a pre-programmed um, calibration in place, AutoCal can help to fill that gap. Much like when you're using a GC or an LC or a mass spec, you as the operator can build and own your own calibrations. So the short answer is yes, everybody can still use NIR in this regard for food tests and so on and so forth like we discussed earlier. But the bottom line is you gain the speed and decision making and you control the calibrations using Buki's Proximate. And uh, from there, we have one more level to go. Um, Ryan. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, so if, if NIR benchtop was essentially taking, you know, Keldall walking and moving that to an automobile by speeding that up, NIR online or inline is kind of moving to a rocket ship. I mean, this is real time analysis 24 seven. So you're, you're moving from spot checks to all of a sudden having eyes on your, whether it's incoming material, your actual production or finished goods, you're seeing 24 seven what was going on. So it allows you to do some more predictive Information essentially allows you to understand what's going to happen down the pipeline and also to track, hey, where was the issue? Um, and to Jerry's point, you're still, you still have all those things that you were able to do with the bench top. You can do multiple parameters simultaneously, and you still have the Buki advantage of developing and owning your own calibration data, which is unique to the Buki NIR. Uh, another benefit is that this can actually be integrated another step further into process control. So... NIR online is essentially getting you that information as, pass, as fast as possible, but what you do with process control is it's automating the information. It's now telling your, your system essentially what to do with that. So rather than being reactive, it's proactively taking care of the things based on what you had set it up to do. The images you see on your screen here are just two of the options because we can fit into a lot of different options as far as whether it's liquids, semi-solids, paste, and you can see the cheese wheels on the right. Um, on the left, we actually have a pipe which has product going through a chute down here. The sample will run over the analyzer that you see with the purple cable there. So there's a sapphire lens mounted into the, the pipe and it's going to uh, hit the light, it's gonna hit the product and come back and you're going to get the spectra which is gonna give you those results. 
So again, it's constantly moving product going over that sensor and you see real time what's going on. The image on the right is you see the, the light source coming out of it, but essentially it's hitting these cheese wheels and it's telling you what those values are per batch of those as well. So again, online is kind of taking it the next step further where you now have real time data 24 seven. Thanks Ryan. <clears throat> now that we have this fundamental basic understanding of the instrumentation used for protein determination, let's have a look at some key factors that the quality control teams need to consider before they can really identify the best protein solution in their situation. Um, I encourage our listeners to make a mental note or jot down some um, things that, that <clears throat> answer the questions that will be proposed in this next segment and reflect on your own business. So, so the we all know, oh, I'm sorry, right here. We know protein is valuable and expensive, uh, an expensive resource in food and feed products. And so one of those important questions to ask is where the most valuable protein measurements are. So Ryan, can you go ahead and give us your thoughts on this one? Yeah, so you see on here that basically the different images are trying to showcase that these are relevant information from the incoming material, you know, whether this is out, actually out in the field or it's right when it's coming in the door to your production, you know, on the bottom left, having like, you know, cheese come through or the finished product before you send it out to your customers or our vendors or wherever it's going. At all of these stages, it could be very relevant. And I'm sure as everyone's listening here, they know where their pain points are as far as, okay, it is most critical for me to know protein here because I've either had failure or I've had to redo work. There's all these things that can go into it. So knowing where it affects you the most, that's where you can start to say, I, you know, this would be a great spot to now to analyze protein there. Uh, but you can do it at all the sites. I'm having trouble advancing the slide. <laughs> All the videos here. <clears throat> so one of the things that you have to think about is, you know, what is the what is the the problem with not knowing the protein or getting the protein information late? You know, is it is it a time consuming to have it to go to the laboratory to not know real time? If you fail a batch, you're now finding this out eight hours later, and you're going to have to redo a ton of work. Um, so, you know, part of this is automating that, but allowing you to have that information to process it faster and to have that assurance of what you ha should have for your product, you're actually seeing as you go from incoming material production to your finished goods. All right, thanks for that, Ryan. And next we'll take a look at the question of how is your infrastructure? So since the infrastructure really required for a benchtop NAR is just some real estate on the lab bench, uh, the bullet points here on this slide really just apply to Keldall. So if you want to bring Keldall in-house, you'll need, of course, some lab space. Um, you'll also need some fume hoods and proper space and systems for chemical and waste storage. So if you don't already have that infrastructure in place, you'll need to consider whether you can add them or need to look at alternatives to protein determination um, by Keldall. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is, are there personnel limitations? You know, some businesses we work with, they're like well-oiled machines. They've got departments upon departments, and each one having specialized people handling each task. Whereas some other businesses are smaller or they're startups, they have a few people juggling a lot of different jobs, wearing a lot of different hats. So you need to consider whether your team, however big or small, can handle the workload of the protein solution you choose and whether they have the technical expertise required to accomplish those measurements both safely and accurately. Just as an example, Keldall users need to have a baseline technical aptitude while the NAR solutions are a lot more turnkey and simple. So for something like a 24 seven production line with shift work, you might find something like NAR to be a little more practical. We're also gonna look at um, your budget. Of course, it would be awesome to have all the toys, right? Have every protein determination option right there at your fingertips, but that's probably not in the cards for most businesses. 
Uh, so we really need to look at a return on investment for each technology based on the unique circumstances of your um, business. So that's something people like Jerry and Ryan can really help you work through. And it's hard to give um, a general rule of thumb here because again, there's so many factors at play so that they would work, work, work with you to identify um, all of the things that would play into that ROI. So now that we've covered these factors that you need to consider and ask yourself, let's look at some typical customer profiles we run into. I'll run through four profiles and Ryan and Jerry will propose a good fit protein solution for each one. So for customer profile number one, this is someone who wants to invest in in-house uh, decision-making equipment. So in-house QC equipment. Maybe currently there is no in-house lab or they have very limited QC space, um, possibly a small work floor, workforce. And the goal is to inexpensively develop some in-house QC and keeping in mind, you know, the investment costs of doing so. So Jerry, can you tell us how you'd guide this customer? Sorry. Okay, so first things first, um, we find we kind of need to find out a little bit more detail about who you are. Um, what is your primary goal here? Are you looking for quick decision making? If that's the case, if you're looking to bring a primary method in the house, that's the case, then you are looking at the differences of whether it be Keldahl or whether it be a benchtop NIR. Um, benchtop NIR is actually a very good place for people to start. And the reason being is because there are third party accredited laboratories that are out there that would be able to give you that primary data by which you can calibrate your bench top NIR. So, but if you are looking at, at um, also wanting to have a primary method, keep in mind, it's not just the instrument, it's also the instrument plus the infrastructure improvements that you would need to have, such as the fume hoods and acid cabinets and things along that line as well. So when we're looking at your business this is what we want to do to help to make you to help you understand that we want to partner with you with a customized fit for which is the best bang for your buck so to speak all right ryan back to you okay thanks jerry all right for our second profile uh this is a customer who wants to maintain quality while speeding up pr the production process maybe their business is growing quickly um, they need to adapt to a changing workforce, which may include, you know, a difficulty finding highly technical people. Um, perhaps they have an in-house QC lab currently using Keldall, uh, but they want the ability to make quicker decisions to impact their profitability or and or product quality. So Ryan, will you take this one away? Yeah, so if you can imagine if you have someone coming in with incoming material and you know you want them to sign off on this, that, hey, the product is what it is, it might be great to do a spot check, but you don't have the time to send it to the lab, wait hours for this result, and you want to just check right then and there. NIR Benchtop could be a great solution for that because it allows you to do that spot check. Same thing, again, on any of the lines. If you want to do you know, your production or finished product, you want to just do a quick grab and test that, that's the benefit of that. And the same thing with the online, right? You can do that all in line, monitoring that real time. So whereas you have to have those fast results or the constant look, you still have the need for those primary testing, whether it's outsourced or whether you have it in the lab, that's still very much needed and valuable. But it's also great to be able to do it very, very quickly. So that's where NIR with a bench top unit, which again can be used in the laboratory, and it can also be used on the bench floor. Um, so our units are waterproof, dustproof, so they can be put anywhere, whether it's production floor or in the laboratory. So again, there's solutions really to get real-time data anywhere you want it. Great. Thanks, Ryan. Okay. So for number three, um, this in this customer profile, we want to add process control capabilities to an existing quality control program. Maybe this person's already using Benchtop NIR and they're looking for possibilities to leverage that um, in a calibration transfer. So Ryan, will you take this one also? Yeah, so kind of alluded to it earlier, but e each of the ways we've described is basically advancing, whether it's speed or time and, and to Jerry's point, what do you need? You know, What is required? What's gonna help you understand your product and get you to where you need to be? 
And the online really does take it to that next step, that rocket ship taking you as fast as you can to get those results. Integration with process control so you're not having to manually make changes based on that information. It's automatically doing those things. And then you're also allowed to, again, take some of the calibrations you may have developed on the bench top and start applying that to the online platform. So the ability to advance and move and implement in different areas is wide open there. So, you know, dream big when it comes to NIR online, because again, it can be done in piping, conveyors, chutes, wherever, inside, outside, you can do it. So a lot of options for you. All right, thanks, Ryan. All right, the last profile, uh, someone wants to bring primary methods back in-house. Uh, they, they're looking to save costs over sending uh, samples away for third-party testing. They want to control compliance and turnaround time for their primary testing. And they just understand and need to adapt to changing market, changing, pro, um, cha excuse me, the changing market, uh, the demand for products that is continuously changing. So Jerry, can you uh, comment on this one? Sure. So actually this is a scenario that I've seen in many different settings where the company has a pain point, if you will, and their goal is really to retake control. <coughs> excuse me. In this regard, um, they wanna bring the primary method back into house. They understand the challenges that they will have they may already have the fume hoods, they may not, whatever the case may be. But the difference is, is taking that control, making it so that way they're cut, they can really experience a good return on investment because now they're able to control getting that product to market. Um, nothing's worse than having a product sitting on a bench or a warehouse rather, and uh, waiting to be delivered, waiting on that nutrition facts label or that validation stamp certificate, whatever, to be able to actually ship it out because that's a dollar sitting on docks. So it's, it's easy for people to begin to experience what the ROI is by bringing um, primary methods back in house. It does save costs over third party testing as well. But the real savings here is when um, that product is released and able to be shipped and everything is good in that regard. And then of course, it comes one other aspect is we know our marketplace is continually changing. And because of that reason, products change. Being able to take control over that product as you're working through your R&D, working through your quality control, that actually works very well hand in hand. And so now you can adjust your quality control for your decision-making with NIR much more rapidly and take it from there. And uh, it does make for uh, your company to be more healthy in that regard. Okay. And uh, Ryan, back to you. Yeah, I like that. Don't leave dollars on the docks. I like that analogy. All right, so we've gone through uh, four typical customer profiles, but we don't want to put anyone on, in a box. We know every business is unique, and we'd love to help guide your company toward a best fit protein solution, um, you know, through some one-on-one -on -one cons consultation. So that's the end of our presentation. Uh, thanks so much for joining. Now I'll turn the mic over to Diane, who will share any questions that came up in the chat. Great, thank you guys very much for that presentation. Um, so I uh, do have a couple of questions here, and then if anyone um, is on the phone and wants to unmute and um, add to that, feel free to do that. Um, so the first one um, that had here is the, the all important question, you know, wh what's the relative cost of these protein solutions? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take care of that. Okay, uh, this is Jerry, by the way. Um, so what you have is we have um, three different solutions in front of us. And based on the three different solutions, basically there are dollar figures that are attached. We all know that uh, these type of businesses is a business to business transaction and it requires an investment on your part. And uh, so we wanna meet you where you're at. In the world of the primary methods that we're working with today called Keldall, we have a solution from 20,000 to about 100,000 very basic models like what we've seen in the past, and then also uh, fully automated systems that are one button push start. For Benchtop NIR, the range basically, again, we're working on a different configuration, whether you're looking at up view, down view, you want color added, um, you're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of about 45 to about 60,000. And when you're talking about NIR online, um, you're looking at a starting point of somewhere in the neighborhood of about 65, 
and then goes up from there, depending on your configurations. Um, Ryan, anything you wanted to add to that based on NIR online? No, the, the biggest thing would be, again, the analyzer, you know, the, depending on the options you need, whether, like Jerry mentioned, color, or even if it's an extended range from the spectrum, you can go typically 900 to 1700 nanometers, and you can expand even up to the 2200 nanometers if you have a target molecule that's higher than that. But other than that, I would say that it really depends on how you want to implement this. If it's a simple Walden flange, that's probably the most economical version, whereas if you have to have maybe a bypass. So there are some more uh, in-depth options that are out there, but typically it'll just depend on what you want it to look like. But we can certainly fit within what your budget is and then what you're trying to do from an engineering standpoint. Great. Um, and then another question is, do you do you need to start with the benchtop NAR or can you go straight to inline? We see both. Um, so this is Ryan again. So this you see both from from people out in the field. So some people want to start with the bench top. You know, they they want to be able to move it from spot to spot or try to build a calibration just from an entry point. Um, some people know I have to monitor protein in this process line, and they want to jump right to there. Um, some people then buy bench top after they have online. So we see all different options. It really depends on where again is it most critical for you to monitor your protein. And then we figure out how we need to do that. And then we will help you figure out the best options. Perfect. And then a follow-up on the cost question. How, how can a customer determine ROI on these? Jerry, you want to take that? Yeah. So with ROI, the one thing that you really want to look at is your product going to market as well as uh, um, the time that it's set, sitting on the docks. So you know, realistically, when we're talking about return on investment, instrumentation might actually be a fairly low cost compared to getting your product to market. Um, now, ROI is one of those interesting things because it's different for everybody. So what's, one, what's a fit for one person is not exactly a fit for the other. So when we're talking about ROI, it's more of a partnership conversation that we have to have. In other words, we talk about the instrumentation, which is a better fit for you. But then also, what really is your goals? What are your goals? Are, is it long-term planning? Is it something short-term? Those are the kinds of questions. But again, the main thing here is just that partnership and conversation. So that way you can make a good business decision. From the online perspective, you know, I would say that, you know, think about your failed batches. Think about the, the time it costs, you know, to have a chemist, maybe go get the sample to run to a laboratory to go do the test. How long are they standing in front of it versus what would a real time not having to pull the sample and it's just instantly giving you that, that result. What is that? You know, how many failed batches did you have last year and how much did that cause you? And, you know, A, maybe losing a customer or B, having to do rework or wait for additional supplies from a vendor who maybe had a failed batch that came in. So these are all things that can be helping to build to your assessment of, OK, how much is this really costing us not to know what's going on? And then um, you, you also said that you can create your own calibrations. How is that done? Yeah, so Jerry alluded to earlier with our uh, bench top option that we have what's called auto cal. So Buki has a philosophy that you own your calibration data. So we are not giving you a cookie cutter method and saying, hey, run with it because it's not the same for everybody. There's a lot of things that can go into a calibration. So if you know, you're looking at seasonality of a product, regionality uh, from a vendor. So if you're getting you know, a, a crop from one part of the country or a different country, uh, versus spring versus fall, uh, you know, did they maybe have too dry of a, you know, a spring and they, that's going to affect the values on the back end. So all these things can, can really affect that. Um, so I lost my train. I thought you were right. <laughs> Where was it going on the <laughs> auto cal? <laughs> yeah, the auto cal. I was so busy thinking about crops. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so with the auto cal, focus on that, basically it allows you to add in samples that you know the value of. So if, again, you're running the protein analysis on Keldal and you say, okay, this is that value for the incoming material. This is the value for the production and finished goods. You then take that back, add those in to correlate what that spectra was with that sample. And you're now putting this into your calibration curve. So you're building it specific to your product. 
and it's never finished, right? It's a living thing. So you're constantly adding in new vendors, different seasons, those types of things. And eventually you have such a robust curve that it has a, a really great, strong predictive value. Uh, but again, it's custom to you and you own that. So we're not then taking, once we develop a great curve and trying to sell it to a competitor or somebody else, anything, right? This is unique to you and then you own those values. And this can be done on Benchtop as well as online. And then I and then I have a question. So I've got a customer that um, is actually working on an R and D project for some plant based proteins, and they're looking to move this into production. So what would you recommend, or what would be next steps for for that opportunity? So if they're R and D and they want to move it into production, the the main thing that we'd want to do is talk to them about what their lab space would be. If do they have the lab space that's built for the chemistry, or is it a lab space that's kind of built better toward NIR? Um, so typically with uh, plant-based, one of the beauties of uh, the utilization of AutoCal is there is no pre-packaged method. So we can build that from the ground up very quickly and simply and easily. It's just a, really a conversation we have to have about which is going to be the better fit. Do they really need the primary method where they're going to be testing again and again and having variability over and over again? Or are they kind of settled where they're needing to be? And they're just looking at the ranges to actually move that into more of a process production type of an arena. So, <coughs> excuse me, again, it comes down to, we have that conversation. We can then best advise. So that way you can best determine which is the best bang for your buck, if you will. Okay. Any, any other questions? All right, well, if not, um, thank you so much to the presenters today um, for your time and, and your knowledge that you shared with us. Um, for all the folks on the phone, um, this was being uh, recorded, so we will share that with everyone. And then um, certainly if there's an opportunity um, for any of these items, um, please make sure to reach out and we can schedule a consultation with your Midland Scientific representative and or answer any questions that you might have after um, following the presentation here. So we'll go ahead and give you guys back some of your day and thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.